Honest Luke, the podcast chat show that tells your story. What's that? that just over there, just over to look over your shoulder there. That Charl- that's a, a Charlton Elgin towel. <laughs> did, you, did you notice that? <laughs> no, I didn't that's a, a, be- a beach towel I had uh, made uh, um, made up. And I think it's uh, Charlton fans were making them up for Charlton Rangers because there's the, an affiliation between Charlton and Rangers. But there's, a, a, there's an affiliation between most clubs and Rangers. Anyway, <laughs> I've noticed the Elgin Rangers bad, actually, in your uh, merchandise. But, right. yeah, that beach towel, that beach towel there, that Charlton loyal Elgin City beach towel is probably the only one in the entire world. And it would be <laughs> great to see that around Borough Briggs, actually, <laughs> some sometime. I'd have to bring it along. Aye, maybe he's... <laughs> but, I mean, I was just, uh, just saying... Going to ask you, um, as far as the future is concerned, how long how long do you think you will stay involved with the football club? Just just until, just until it be, I, I will, you know, become worthless. So you, you know? till you, because you are, you are Mr. Elgin, really, nah, aren't you? Uh, you are I, Mr. Elgin City. Ah, uh, no, the Cecil Cecil does is, is is unbelievable. Cecil does a lot of work as well. You know, I mean, it it it's all it is is that I'm not rich. I'm not rich, and I can't so I can't pump money into into the club. To make it better, but what I can do is I can give it a lot of energy. So I I spend most of my time down there, and we do lots and lots of work. You know the shares. Do an awful lot actually. Yeah, doing loads of work in the time that you've been here. I've seen you stuff, oh, you know? every day. I run past the ground every day, and most of the time you're doing something. Yep. Yeah, so as, as long as I can keep on doing that, but eventually, eventually, if if I feel that if if the club want to progress and go forward, then they're going to have to find someone who's got massive investment because mm. I can't do it is there anybody there that's potentially no, not no. at all no it, it, you need to be I mean the, look what Queen's Park have done no that's the boy Hohe who used to be in charge of Celtic he's he's taken Queen's Park on and, and done it with them we just haven't got the money and but the finances but you can't spend what you haven't got as I said to you before because the only thing is it, you've got to look at the model with Gretna before you came up here Gretna were a side that came from the uh, the, the Borders League they got in the Scottish third division. They got voted in. A guy called Miles Gransden, who had lots of lots and lots of businesses around Sunderland area, he brought in, um, it, it brought it right through, took it right through to the Premier League, got the Scottish Cup final, and then the money dried up. He, he got a bit dementia. But you say that about said. you say that about money, but Charlton Athletic, um, 1984, went out of business. You know, we lost the ground. I had, I had a season ticket at Crystal Palace. I had a season ticket watching them at, you know, we're lucky to have a football club, but we had a manager then who you might remember, Lenny Lawrence. Right, Lenny he, ended Lawrence up, yep. he went to Middlesbrough in the end, took Robert Lee within the sod, but um, Robert Lee, or no Robert Lee. Newcastle. Great Newcastle player, but Robert Lee was one of my boyhood heroes, like Paul Wall. He left or, Newcastle to go be, be with his family because his child had a, um, a disability. Right. Okay. He left Newcastle. I, he, he's a, I think he's a good he was player. pretty much at the end of his career, though. Good in, player, though. Oh, right. fantastic right. player for Charlton. Absolutely phenomenal player. And uh, he was in the Keegan era. Yes, yeah. and he he scored the last goal at the Valley. All right. Um, in 1984 against Stoke in a two nil win. Um, when we left the Valley in front of a pathetic crowd of about four thousand because they most of the ground was then deemed unsafe by the council. And uh, Lenny Lawrence, uh, some absolutely in my lifetime, people say about Kerbishley and that. For me, Lenny Lawrence was was the man because I, I was a teenager when Lenny was manager of that team, and we we I turned up to watch Charlton play Crystal Palace on a Saturday afternoon. They had local rivals to be given a program with an insert in it saying we're leaving the Valley, which was sort of heart out of you to read that. You know that was our ground. You know I love the Valley. And um, but it said we're going to share with Crystal Palace. It was, it was sickening. It was absolutely sickening. And we only had a few games there. And then we were all of a sudden we were having to travel on a number seventy-five to fucking Norwood to watch Crystal Pal- uh, at Charlton at Crystal Palace. Which and, and we lost a lot of fans because of that. Well, you're to. Um, we lost a lot of fans. But you know what, Lenny Lawrence that season he had a very average team. And uh, but together they were superb team, um, amazing team. But if you look at the names on the on the paper, there was no one, no big names on there. But they were just an amazing team under an amazing manager who got them out of the, the old second division into what is now the Premier League under those circumstances, without a ground, with players like that, with no money, with nothing. And that 
is why I always believe that you don't need money. You just need the right mix. And you said it the other day after the Albion game, the mix isn't right, something's not quite right. Or it wasn't that day, that's for sure. Yeah, but luck wasn't on right. the organ side. But I, I just look back at that Lenny time with them players. Yeah, you know, but Rob, you couldn't stay in there. You could, it's not sustainable. You need the money to be to be sustainable in that Premier League. Well, we just, we stayed there for a few years. We, yeah. we, we probably for the, the the second half of the eighties, we were there more often. Well, because we went down, we came back. You That's know. what I'm saying. It's very you don't want to be, you don't want to become a yo-yo club like West Bromwich Albion, Fulham. You know, you, you you and to stay there. And what what happens is the rich are getting richer, so the top end are getting the the, the, the if you see the prize money, in the Premier League, the, the top end get a vast amount of the money. So that the bottom end, although when Newcastle went down, they got 95 million and they could afford to stay in the first division and, and, and get back up again, the championship, sorry, and get back up again and they come straight back up and kept a full-time team. If a team like Charlton could build and get out of the league on, on what was pretty much adrenaline probably, momentum and just having a good group of players that weren't getting paid much, it, well, no one was getting paid then anyway. The club went into liquidation. No, I mean, there were players, there was famous photos of Terry Cale sitting on a beer crate outside the valley where they got locked out. No one had any money. People were playing for nothing but they got out of um, the second tier into the top tier of English football. So that's that's what I, I just think, well, you know, Gavin could certainly get from what I've seen of these of Elgin. I could get Gavin could get the team out of League Two into League One. Thanks for tuning in to Honest Luke. To watch premieres, full-length episodes, and all new content, subscribe to the Honest Luke Show on YouTube. Honest Luke.